olive oil really stands out. Number yeah. one, it's part of a healthy pattern of eating that's been revered for thousands of years. And that's in the Mediterranean, traditional Mediterranean diet. And the olives are seasonal, they're pressed. The extra virgin olive oil contains not just fat, poly and monounsaturated fatty acids, which are better for your body and less damaging for your cardiovascular health. But there's a lot of polyphenols that come from the olive itself. Now, a lot of people don't understand this, but when you look at olive oil, the reason we say extra virgin olive oil, E-V-O-O, -O, you know, that's what the that's what supermarkets and what restaurants are proud to use now, is because it's not just fat. It contains the polyphenols from the oil. So if, if you were to actually, by the way, this is a good experiment to do for, for your listeners, buy a little container of olives from your grocery store, deep it, make it easy for yourself. And literally, you know, take it home and, and take a, a heavy glass or take a, a board, like a, like a heavy cutting board and press those olives yourself. And you'll actually see, if you press hard enough, you'll see some oil come out of it. Now, right. in, a, in an olive oil factory, I mean, that, that's, that's so you can actually appreciate where your food comes from, where your olive oil comes from. Now, when you actually press it, you'll see that you've crushed the olives. And some of the bits from the olives are actually in the olive oil. The reason that olive oil tastes so good, it's got that, you know, kind of um, peppery, vegetal kind of quality to it. Um, it's got an umami flavor. It's not because the fat is flavorful. It's because the bits of olives that were crushed in there mm. are actually in there flavoring it. Now, those bits and the stuff that comes from the meat of the olives contain the polyphenols, one of which is hydroxytyrosol. Hydroxytyrosol sounds like a very complicated chemical name. You don't, your listeners don't need to memorize it by any means, but you should know that that comes from the olive. Now, uh, olive oil will have some of it, only about 20% of the of, of it. But if you actually press that olive, 80% goes into the olive water and, and it's stuck in the pulp. And so one of the things that I always say is that, you know, if you really love olive oil and you want to get the most out of it, um, just eat the whole olive, you know, and you can actually cut up an olive and you'll get a little bit of fat, you'll get all that flavor and you'll get a lot more of the polyphenol. Now, if you're going to cook with olive, olive oil, I, I, I always say go for extra virgin because of that reason. I would say, don't deep fry, but, but you can spray, you can put, put some on uh, to food. You can actually saute with it, not too much. All the studies show that about three tablespoons of olive oil, uh, sort of like what you, probably that's around the max of what you'd want a day. So nobody's drinking olive oil. And then the other thing that is, if you want to choose which olive oil, because I get overwhelmed when I walk into a store and I see all these, like a whole wall full of olive oils, right? Everybody's marketing. Here's what I do again. I pick up the olive uh, and oil and I look at the ingredients. <clears throat> what do I look for? I look for monovarietal olive oil. Monovarietal means it's made with just one kind of olive. And I look for the one kind of olive that, that, it, that oil is made from, from three different varieties of olive. In Spain, Spanish olive oil, I look for Picuel, P-I-C-U-A-L. Picuel olives, among the highest. In, in polyphenols in the oil. So the olive oil will be loaded. Second, um, Greek olive oil, um, the Koroneki olive, which is from the Peloponnesus. It, both, both the Picuon and Koroneki are very common olives. So that's a good news. It's not very expensive. Highest amount of poly, one of the top three polyphenols. And the third, for Italian olive oil, I look for um, uh, oil that's been pressed from a monovarietal called Moraiolo. And that comes from Umbria. And there, that's less common, harder to find, a little pricier. But I just gave you three olives, uh, Picuel, Koroneki, Moriolo, uh, that are not, most of them are not good eating olives, but they're great for olive oil. They're packed with polyphenols. If you get uh, olive oil that is monovarietal, pressed only from each of those, you can be guaranteed that you're getting sort of the top, the sort of the capo de capo of the polyphenols in the olive oil. Yeah, I love that. I, I actually, in, in my kitchen, as we speak now, is the Picuol olive. It's, uh, well, I would have called it a single origin, but that's because I'm probably used to picking coffee. But as you were describing that, there was such a wonderful energy in your voice and your body language. It, it reminded me of like a wine connoisseur talking about the different varieties of wines or a, or a coffee connoisseur talking about that, you know, I get the single origin bean from this particular farm. 
But I guess it's not that different, is it? It's about going back to where does this come from? How was it processed? What is actually in my hand right now that I'm about to buy? Yeah, and, and you know, there is great pride that we as humans have always had, and it's still within us, to know something about the food that is around us. I mean, you know, uh, if you talk to a farmer, they are proud of what they have. If you talk to a villager, they're really proud of what their community, what grows around their community. And again, I think that, you know, something that maybe that we're fighting against, because I, I want to draw back the jargon that you raised at the beginning that I think is helpful to think about. What are we, what are we really fighting against? You know, I think we're, we're fighting against our distraction from ourselves, getting to know who we are, getting to know, slowing down so we can actually understand our own pace. We're getting distracted by the, uh, by the, by the pace of what we're expected to do. And so we've got no time for ourselves, right? I mean, every, every young working parent certainly feels that way, mm -hmm. you know, like, man, I'm so busy and on time for myself. And yet when it comes to food and health, we all need to have that time for ourselves. And I think we should take great pride in saying what it is that we actually love. Yeah. A lot of people talk about the health properties of vegetables. Of course, you promote all kinds of vegetables which have different impacts on the body. But some of the time we're told to sprinkle or pour some olive oil onto the vegetables because it helps us absorb nutrients from them. What's your perspective on that in view of what you've just said about oil and you know, perhaps not over consuming it even though it can be healthy? Yeah, well, there's two, let's unpack that because there's two things that you were describing. One is that in plants, let's take a tomato as a great example. Uh, there are natural substances, natural chemicals uh, like lycopene. Lycopene is a carotenoid. It helps to make the tomato red. Um, it has lots and lots of healthful properties. It's a powerful antioxidant. I've studied lycopene in a laboratory and it actually can help starve cancers by cutting off the blood supply. Um, it can slow the shortening of telomeres um, to slow cellular aging. And it, and it can protect our DNA from even sunlight and ultraviolet exposure. Lots of good things about it. Now, lycopene actually is a uh, uh, naturally occurs in a tomato on a vine in a chemical form that our body doesn't absorb that well. So if you pick a tomato off the vine, and you cut it up and you throw it into a salad, it might taste great. It's got some vitamin C in it. It's a great source of hydration and great flavors, okay? If, especially if it's like a homegrown heirloom type of tomato. But you're not going to get the like, you're not going to get as much lycopene. You're probably only going to get maybe 20% of the lycopene that's in there. But you want to, like for me, I want to get as much of the good stuff as I can. So here's what research has found. If you wanted to convert that chemical structure of lycopene into a form that you can absorb better, your body can avidly absorb. What you want to do is you want to heat the tomato like in a pan and with the heat will change the chemical structure from a form your body doesn't absorb that well into a form that your body avidly absorbs, loves to absorb it. Now you go from 20% absorption to 80% absorption. You flipped, a, you flipped it around completely, upended that equation completely. Now you're really absorbing it. Now, here's one additional thing though. How would you heat a tomato in a pan? You put heat it in water or nothing? No, not really. You put a little bit of olive oil in it. And why is that? And, and, and it's because lycopene is a substance that we call fat soluble. It's a lipid, it loves to dissolve into fats. So a little bit of olive oil in tomatoes on a pan sauteed, so it's soft, change the chemical structure, flavors are really great now, and you have that. Now when you uh, eat that tomato sauce sauteed in olive oil, the oil, the olive oil with the lycopene is carried into your body even more efficiently mm. than if it were cooked in water. And so again, that's an ex that's just one example of thousands of how oils with fat soluble foods. By the way, if you didn't want to uh, look at olive oil, here's another common snack in, in the United States anyways, kind of tearing a page book from Latin American cuisine, you have these tortilla chips and then you wind up actually having a salsa and guacamole. The salsa, salsa is often sort of stewed down tomatoes, uh, cooked down tomatoes, served room temperature or chilled. And then the guacamole is just avocado that's been smashed up. Now, avocado has 
a lot of healthy fats in it. Uh, it's, it's, it's a fat soluble veggie. It's actually quite uh, nutritious. Uh, and remarkably, uh, people eating avocado actually shrink their waistline because actually, it, even though they're eating fat, it actually makes you, it burns down harmful fat. It's a whole other story that we had. But if you have guacamole, avocado with tomatoes, you get more lycopene. And so that happens to be kind of a popular snack uh, in yeah. the United States. Yeah, I love that. So the right combination of foods can actually help absorb the nutrients. I think black pepper also can do that, right? With certain nutrients. Well, right. So black pepper is, so this is an interesting thing. We, most of us have heard that turmeric, which is a kind of a, a root, um, when you cut it open, it's this bright, beautiful, bright orange, a lovely color. And, and turmeric is also a dried spice used in Southeast Asian cuisine, uh, including Indian cuisine is where I first became acquainted with it. It um, uh, not only makes food beautiful, it actually makes food delicious. It's got a quite a, a lovely taste to it. It's a, it's a spice. Inside turmeric is curcumin. Curcumin is one of those natural chemicals, kind of like lycopene. It's one of those Mother Nature's treasure chest, Mother Nature's pharmacy with an F, not a PH. And the 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 the, the curcumin has a lot of properties, anti-inflammatory, it's antioxidant, it cuts off the blood supply feeding cancers. Um, it uh, uh, actually is helpful for your stem cells as well. It's It really activates almost all of your body's health defenses and it's good for your gut microbiome. So why not just you know enjoy turmeric as a spice by itself because it's so potent that our body actually doesn't absorb everything that it could. In fact, our body kind of uh, it kind of gets a lot of it gets flushed out, you know, uh, at the tail end. And so, what we want to do to improve our body's extraction of the good, um, the good stuff, the the turmeric. It turns out that if you have fresh cracked black pepper, all right, there's a substance in fresh cracked black pepper called piperine. Yeah. Piperine is one of Mother Nature's. Um, uh, again, you know, these remarkable chemicals that actually uh, in, influences the body. And piperine helps the body hang on to the curcumin. So if you have fresh cracked black pepper with your turmeric, uh, you, you're actually creating a one-two punch that allows you to absorb more of the curcumin. If you enjoyed that clip, here's another powerful clip that I think you are really going to enjoy. Blood pressure comes down, joints seem to get better, bowel symptoms seem to get better. This is going to keep your eyesight. This is going to keep you from getting dementia, renal disease, peripheral vascular disease, and cancers. You are not your habits. You can do it.